What's going on guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be reacting to British plugs and outlets are on another level. About three or four months ago, I reacted to a video about British plugs, but in the comment section of that video, a lot of people were telling me that I actually needed to check out this specific video because it goes more in depth on how awesome of a design the British plug truly is. In the video I watched, it was maybe about four minutes long, so it really didn't have time to go truly in depth on the British plug or outlet. I generally learned about a few of the main safety features in that video, and that video alone made me realize the British plug design really is awesome. But supposedly, guys, there's a lot more to it, and I guess that's what we're going to find out here. And from what I understand, this guy in this video is actually an American, so I think he's going to be able to kind of compare American and British plugs and outlets side by side or something. And so it'll probably give me a better idea of what a British plug truly looks like and you know how much better of a design it really is. Because I know right off the bat, based off the previous video I watched, the British plug and outlet is definitely better when it comes to safety. Um, there were a number of really interesting safety uh, protocols um, you know, with the outlet and plug in the UK, one of those things is the fact that it has like a shutter system in the outlet itself. I, I He'll probably explain that here. Uh, but anyways, guys, let's just go ahead and dive in and check out British plugs and outlets are on another level. British AC plugs and sockets are very different from a lot of the other plugs and socket sets around the world. And they're super different than what we're used to here in North America. <laughs> yeah, in fact, they definitely are. holding these two next to each other, Look at these that. British ones seem absolutely mammoth. But I'm going to cover 10 reasons why I think this plug and this socket may just be the best design set in the entire world, as well as a handful of reasons why I think they might not be. Feature mm. number 10 on our list is this longer ground pin. Now, long ground pins are actually super common. We see them in our US plugs and in other plugs all over the world, but this is quite different actually. It serves a purpose in an overall safety system on these types of plugs. By the way, these are called Type G, and the Type G here has this longer pin because as you insert it, and by the way, across the pond there, they call this an earth pin. So right. as you insert the earth pin, you'll notice that the first thing that touches is that earth pin because it's longer. And then it, so yeah. the neutral the and the shutters. light haven't made contact yet, but there's actually what's called a shutter system right. inside here that it's opening up by pushing that one in first. That's cool, so man. That's now, a really cool as I design. Got it that far, it opened up the shutters, and then I can proceed to plug it all the way in. Until I do that, these are actually closed off. Now, obviously, never stick anything into an outlet. Now, this may be. You know, one thing I want to mention real quick, guys, is like, as you see that original, I don't know if you can see, I don't want to rewind, but um, a lot of our plugs in the U.S. actually don't even have a ground pin at all. You know, it's just two prongs. Um, and so I don't know if all your plugs in the U.K. have a ground pin, but or what you guys would call an earth pin. Um, but uh, I just thought that was an interesting thing to to mention be telling about me I don't know but literally one of the earliest memories I have in life is when I was super little maybe three or four and I stuck something into an outlet got completely shocked and I remember looking at the outlet after this had happened and seeing these black scorch marks yeah. all over it this, but kids in the UK man's... most likely haven't had that experience feature number nine is that when we insert the earth pin and clear those shutters the only thing that's exposed on the live and the neutral is actually this black section here. Oh yeah, that's what, what the that black is, section was. That's actually a bit of insulation and it's nine millimeters up these pins here. So that's because once you have some contact with the live and the neutral to your receptacle, it makes it so that you can't touch anything that's live at that that's point. That's a really Check cool safety feature. So man. If I get this part of the way in there and it's actually touching, now the only thing that's exposed is just the insulated area, which is not conductive. So I might be able to touch that and actually be safe. And that's the idea anyway. Obviously you should never try that, but they make it really <laughs> yeah. difficult to get yourself shocked because everything is covered and protected as part of this overall safety system. Feature number eight has everything to do with how the cord comes out of the plug itself. As I plug this into the wall outlet here, you'll notice that it's always coming down on the bottom like this. And that makes it so that you can't really pull this thing out. If you pull this way with it, it's just gonna stay in place. And even if you pull out this way, you can pull this pretty good. 
and it's really not going anywhere. It's a really smart feature. Now this has come loose a little bit, but a lot less than it would hmm. if the cord were coming out of the face of the plug. Speaking of plugs being ripped out of the wall, that brings us to feature number seven. If we open this up and take a look inside here, you'll actually see that there's some pretty cool safety features built right inside. The first thing you might notice is there is built-in strain relief right here. And the cool thing is you can actually remove these little fins in many cases to replace this cord if you need to or to work on it. The next thing is the short cable in here, this brown one, that's your live cable. And this live wire right here is the shortest one and the straightest one so that as you pull this cord out, if it, it gets pulls ripped off. out specifically, that one is going to be the first one to disconnect, yeah. cutting the electricity to the rest of this. The second one is this blue or the neutral one here that's underneath and that will get pulled out next and at that point you have no electricity connected, just your ground. I think it's pretty brilliant that there's extra slack built into the ground. There's very little but a little bit of slack built into the neutral and no slack built into the live. That, man, so that if yeah. this gets ripped out, it pulls the electricity first, again, keeping the user safe. While we're looking at the open plug, that brings us to feature six, which is the fact that these type G plugs can actually be opened up just about any time you need to it. by removing one or more screws. Now type G, just so you know, is not just used in the UK. They're actually all over the place and pretty much anywhere the UK has had some major influence. So for example, they're used in Ireland, the United Arab Emirates, Singapore, Hong Kong, mm. Beijing, Indonesia, parts of India, and even several other countries. So those are very different from the type A and type B that we use here in North America. Yeah, look at that, man. I mean, it's night and day, you know, the the difference in the, in the plugs, man. I, I don't understand why we don't move over to the other types of plugs. I mean, I guess at this point it may cost a bit of money to, to switch everything over, but I don't know. I, I think they should make an effort because it's obvious there are it's, it's, it's a much improved system of plugs and outlets to use the British system versus what we use in America. It's just common sense. The type A is the two prong here and the type B is the three prong, which includes the ground pin. Right. And these guys don't have any way to service anything in here. All of this is completely sealed off. It's completely solid. And there's no way to do anything to fix this if this starts to become broken yeah, you just or have afraid. To throw it Your out. options are to uh, yeah, toss you, it, which is what most people do, yeah. and get a new one, or you can cut it off and use a replacement plug. Right, you I've could do that. I've got a video showing too. how to do that, but it's nice that with the Type G plugs here, it's just a built-in feature to be able to fix these or adjust these if need be. That is pretty All cool. All of the names you see on the screen here are the people who have most recently joined our channel membership and are supporting the channel. So thank you, each and every one. You most likely notice the fuse inside the plug itself here. We see this from time to time in North American plugs, but is definitely not a standard. Having a fuse in I don't think I've ever seen that in a plug in America, or maybe I just didn't realize it, but um, yeah, um, that's, I've never seen that before. I started to say, except a dryer plug. I'm not sure. You know, I've, I've replaced a number of different dryer plugs, but generally speaking, you don't, you don't work on them that I know of. You basically just replace the plug to the dryer itself, if you know what I'm saying. Every plug is actually essential to the system they use, which is called a ring circuit. A ring circuit has the ground, neutral, and live wires going out from the source location and then feeding every single socket and then looping all the way back to the source. This is different than the radial circuits that we use here in North America. We start at the circuit breaker panel and then a line goes out called a home run, connects to as many outlets as we need or receptacles, and then it ends at a light fixture or an mm. outlet. In the UK, the ring circuit actually acts like two separate radial circuits going at the same time, one in each direction. As a result, having a fuse on every appliance means that if there's a short or an overload in an appliance, the fuse in the plug can blow rather than tripping the whole circuit and every- Ah, I was sitting there trying to think, okay, like I'm trying to picture exactly what he's saying here. And okay, that makes a lot of sense, you know, cause I've had that happen many times, you know, uh, one, you know, if uh, you'll have the whole, everything go out basically, you know, instead of just that one plug, okay everything else on it. These fuses are typically pretty easy to replace and they cost next to nothing as well. 
For a plug like this, you do have to take it apart to access that plug, but it's usually just one screw like we saw. But a lot of plugs actually come with a little access panel that you can get without wow. removing any screws to make it even easier. That's convenient. Number four on our list is the robustness of these pins, which are so good at carrying a large load. Now these pins are pretty massive. You may have noticed that. Yeah. They're actually all four millimeters thick on these Type Gs. This wow. is eight millimeters thick. And then these neutral and lives are about 6.35 millimeters. When I hold this side by side next to our Type yeah, B, they're... you can see the difference. The result of this is that the Type G has at least 50% more metal than a Type B. And it actually has three and a half times more metal than the Type A that doesn't have the ground. Yeah, the crazy thing is, I can't tell you how many times, not so much, I think he called these, these are B, right? And the ones that are just two prong are A, right? Um, but especially the A ones, uh, the A, anyway, type A, uh, I can't tell you how many times they bent, even broke because they have bent so much. You have to constantly like, you know, manually spread them apart to make sure they fit in an outlet and things like that is, is pretty ridiculous, honestly, how how flimsy they are. Feature number three is the fact that every Type G plug has a ground or an earth pin. This is really important for a handful of reasons. As far as safety is concerned, right. always having a ground means that you're not going to experience the arcing, or at least you shouldn't in most circumstances experience any arcing. Arcing is bad news because that basically means that electricity has gone off the rails and it's gonna find the path of least resistance. And a lot of times that's through you. That could <laughs> yeah. shock you or with enough voltage that could stop your heart and kill you. So very dangerous if you don't have that ground in place at all times. All right. You will notice on some plugs in the UK, for example, that these are just plastic. Typically, if you see a plastic pin on here, that means the appliance is double grounded. You can mm. tell by a marking or an icon on the appliance that is a square within a square. It also serves the purpose of not only opening the shutters, but also always keeps things aligned. You cannot mix up the live and the neutral if your ground is always at that top place. Wow, that's true. Number two is the fact that every outlet or receptacle has its own switch. So check this out. I've got this little switch right here. Oh yeah, that, I can that was the other thing I learned. Lamp. Of course, you can control the lamp on the device itself, but this comes in handy for multiple purposes. Number one, it gives you an extra place to turn something on or off, and along with that, it cuts the power completely to the device. There's a lot of devices and appliances out there that are using a trickle amount of energy at all times, even when it's powered off. So by switching it off at the receptacle here, you're taking care of that issue. Number one on our list, and honestly, these were pretty tricky to put. That one, uh, I definitely wish we had in the U.S. I wish we had all this in the U.S., right? Uh, with this whole plug and outlet system. But uh, that would definitely be very convenient, you know, when we go out of town or something like that. You know, cut the things off. We don't need running lights, uh, TV, you know, whatever it may be. But, you know, keep the refrigerator and other things running. It would just be so much more convenient than, you know, having to go around and go behind and unplug things and whatnot. Um, but, yeah put in any particular order, so take that for what it's worth, but is the fact that all of these outlets and plugs run off of 230 volts. Here in the US, we use a 110 or 120 volt system. There's different names for it, but it's the same idea. And in the UK, for example, and in most of the world, actually, it's a 230, which is anywhere from 220 to 240 volts, typically. Running on 230 volts has a lot of impact on how you can use the outlets and receptacles around your house. So, for example, if you want to plug a lamp into this, no problem, obviously, but you can even plug a much larger appliance over here. Let's say a washing machine, for example, something a little more power hungry. Right. Space heaters have been a big issue for tripping circuit breakers here in the U.S. Absolutely. On 230 volts. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, he's making a good point because I've had that happen up here so often. Um, you know, but I'm upstairs, uh, if you didn't know, and this is the area in the house that doesn't have central heating or air conditioning. So in the winter, it's freezing cold. In the summer, it's completely hot. And so, um, you know, I usually plug a space heater in during the winter. And I can't tell you how many times I've been using the computer and had the space heater going, and then all of a sudden, boom. I, have, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it gets uh, shorted. And uh, I have to go downstairs and flip the circuit breaker, and it, it just, it's just kind of really aggravating. Uh, that That's really convenient there as well. They can handle that a lot better. 
You can even plug in things like a hair dryer and an iron at the same time wow. in many cases, especially yeah. if the gauging of the wire in the walls is appropriate for that kind of use. All right, here you we can see what these. Here we go. So far, I must say that everything I've seen about the British plug-in outlet is all you know amazing. They're great. I wish we had the, these here in America. So I guess I'm finally going to see what may be some negatives. So. Because there's always pro, pros and cons in every, you know, in every single thing, basically, in every situation. So let's find out what is negative about the uh, British plug-in outlet. Ten features how impressive this setup is, but that is not to say that it doesn't have its flaws. For starters, look at the size of these things. I mean, this is a standard Type A. This is what we use for most things in the United right. States and in North America. I'd seriously, say this is probably at least five times as big. You can yeah. see it from the front. That's huge. You can see versus, it from the side. Yeah, really tiny. It's just massive. Another consideration with this is that the ring circuits that are used in the UK and elsewhere have a problem with what's called load balancing. Now, many times it's not really a big issue, but what it means is that you don't want to have a lot of your power being consumed on one portion of oh, the ring. Oh, yeah. You want to distribute that, makes sense. that throughout the ring as much as possible because mm. if you don't, you're actually forcing a lot of electricity, a lot of load to happen in a short distance of these wires. And these wires typically tend to be a thinner gauge, which is part of the beauty of the system. It takes up less copper, but the load balancing can be an issue in mm. many cases. On that note, installing or maintaining or even testing a ring circuit is a lot more difficult than a radial circuit. So that's something to be considered with the overall system in general. The switches that we showed earlier on the socket here are a good thing in some cases, but they're a bad thing in other cases. So for example, let's say this light is not turning on. You flip the switch. So let's turn this off, you know, on the socket here. We flip the switch, everything seems to be dead. You're not sure what's going on. And at that point, you're not sure if you need to start troubleshooting the lamp itself, or if it's the light bulb, or if it's the socket. Lastly, due to the design of the plug. Oh wait, okay, yeah, I, I kind of get what he's saying there, okay. If you were to just let this thing fall somewhere or unplug it, guess how it's gonna land oh, every yeah. single time. Now, if you thought waking up in the middle of the night, walking through the house and stepping on a Lego was painful. Yeah, that is painful. Oh man, that would hurt, guys. At that point, you're not sure if you need to. Start. That would hurt so bad. <laughs> oh man, I really did think this was an excellent video, guys. Uh, I thought he did a great job explaining, uh, you know, the British plugged in outlet in a much more in depth way than the previous video I watched. Don't get me wrong, the first video was great and it was a good introduction, but this just expanded upon that quite a bit. Um, all in all, yeah, I've, obviously here we learned a few basic things that may be negatives, but um, uh, the British plug and outlet system is hands down completely 100% better than the system here in America, in my opinion. You know, I've, I've used this system my entire life and uh, I can easily see based off of, you know, what we've learned in this video that uh, the British plug and outlet system is, is it really is much better, especially for safety reasons. There are a few cons. I definitely wouldn't want to step on that thing in the middle of the night. Um, and I can see how potentially it being so, the, the plug being so big may in some situations give you less room to put something against a wall or something like that. But really, I mean, all in all, it's not really, that's not really that big a deal. I think all the pros of it definitely outweigh the cons, but thank you guys for stopping by. Please click this like, the like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Till next time, guys. Peace.